going on guys? Dan with PC Tech Hustle coming at you with another video and today I got for you, you guessed it, another budget build and actually another budget build within the three to three hundred fifty dollar mark. The interesting thing about this build though is it's going to be probably one of the most powerful builds at this price point that I've ever put together. And by the way guys, if you enjoy budget builds like this and any other type of PC tech related content, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and tick the bell notification icon. That way you're informed of whenever I drop new content like this. Other than that, let's get cracking into these parts and see what we got. Alrighty guys, so let's delve into the parts here real quick. So let's start off with the motherboard. Pick this guy up. So here we got a Gigabyte A320. Yeah, um, it is a little bit on the cheaper end of boards, but these are still great boards if you're wanting to put together a budget system. So there's nothing really wrong with them. The only real major drawback I would say is you just don't have overclocking capabilities. And obviously with the VRM and the power delivery, I wouldn't say expect to be running any type of super high-end processor, which we're not in this case. So speaking of processors, we got ourselves a Ryzen 1600. And I got that as a combo deal with the motherboard here and the cooler, actually the Spire cooler. So the kind of the better one with a copper uh, surface for $100. So not a bad deal there. And for memory, I got the Patriot Signature Premium memory. I've actually snagged this memory kit up before. It's a pretty decent kit and it's uh, eight gigs at 2666 megahertz so should be a pretty good starter kit good enough for a budget build like this next for the gpu we got here is a rx 578 gig model i picked up off offer up for 85 dollars so pretty good steal with that and it's in great condition this one did not need any cleaning but it is funny that these are so r abundant lately next for storage i just had a samsung drive that i actually had on hand this is the evo oops this is the Evo 840, uh, it's a 250 gig drive, so should be a good drive for getting Windows installed and getting a couple games on there. And obviously whoever buys this can expand upon that later on if they need be. For power, I got a Micro Center Special, although the sticker says 44 or basically $45, actually it was on sale for $37. So this is a 430 watt and it is 80 plus certified. And from what I'm told by the sales reps, these are, power supplies are actually built by Seasonic or has Seasonic-like components. So pretty good power supplies and it actually looks pretty decent too. And to add a little bit of bling to the build, we got the IceTech RGB case fans that I picked up off Amazon for $25 and also have a review video that I'll put in the top right corner where I unboxed and took a quick first look at these. And then lastly, we have the case, which you might also recognize off of another video that I made a little while back on a unboxing and review of this. This is the Lee and Lee Landcool 205. That is also a Micro Center specific product. Got that guy for 50 bucks. And as you guys know, it's pretty feature full if you've watched my other previous video. So really excited to get building in that case. Alrighty guys, so that covers the parts as you saw it. I'm definitely really excited about this build. There's some good quality parts here, even some being used, right? But definitely got a great case from Inwin. We got a good power supply. Some of these all brand new parts. And then obviously the big thing being we have a six core 12 threaded processor. So let's get cracking into that and build this guy up and see what she can do.
Okay guys, there are your benchmarks, and as you can see, pretty interesting results. This machine definitely shows in raw compute power, that's without a doubt. Six cores, 12 threads, it screams on benchmarks like Cinebench, Firestrike, anything that's really going to tax the CPU in a way that is really going to yield good results in a score. Though the difference is gaming for sure. So in my previous build, which I have up here in the right hand corner, being an i5 4 core with actually the same video card, this one actually being technically more powerful because it's an 8 gig card versus that 4 gig card, that system performed actually significantly better in a gaming scenario, but definitely shows where Ryzen has kind of made some improvements over their first generation models of, of, of chips. So now I really want to put it to the test. I had an i5-4690 previously, and actually my next build is the same exact platform because I managed to get a really good deal on it, but this time I want to get either an i7 or a Xeon in there and really see how much of a gap I can produce with versus even a you know the six core 12 threaded processor though this system it's obviously a bit on the lower power side compared to even the other one this one has a better upgrade path it's more modern you can drop even upwards of a Ryzen 9 in there if you're crazy though I would not recommend anything probably beyond a a Ryzen 2600 just because the VRM the power delivery is definitely significantly weak also, if you notice during the build, it only has two DIMM slots, so 
you're kind of limited and you're not really going to get a huge value out of it in the long term. But making it a gaming rig definitely is, it's showing it can, it's very capable. Other than that guys, make sure you do the YouTube thing for me. Give me a like if you like this video and let me know in the comments what you think about a system like this being a Ryzen first gen. Is it still a viable system even on an A320 motherboard which has some obvious limitations. And make sure you check out these videos too. One being the previous build that I did that kind of stacks up to this but has some clear differences. Thanks for tuning in this video guys and I'll catch you in the next one.